It is another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys as we hop into the time machine today. And we're going back, looking at the top five rivalries of all time. Team rivalries specifically, you know, player-to-player -player rivalries. Could be a whole other video. You could have owner versus owner. I mean, owner of a team, <laughs> not owner from Team 1, you know. <laughs> Yeah, certainly some different things going on if we're going through the player rivalries. Some of those player rivalries do factor in to looking at some of these organizational sure. rivalries that we will be looking at through this history. And it's one of these ones we're going through this list, reliving some of these rivalries, thinking about these teams, thinking about these moments. Absolutely. Some of the pinnacle best things that you've got in League of Legends, in esports, that special flair. That all rivalries do give us dive into this list now you can look at the meme ones you know you could do na versus wild card teams na versus crippling despair na versus you know these are all marquee rivalries and matchups but the one that didn't quite make the list that i will highlight is t1 slash skt versus edg and this is such an interesting one because it's only internationally. They're not even from the same region, but time and time again, they find a way to match up at Worlds and at MSI. But it doesn't crack the top 10 because aside from a 2015 MSI win, it was just P1 denying EDG wins at Worlds. It was. I mean, at least the competition was there, right? We got to see it so many times, and there is that aspect of a rivalry built up when you are that loser so many times over, so many times being denied by this one face, this one organization uh, in SKT. I think with me for this rivalry, it absolutely is one of the peak rivalries that we had in the early years of League of Legends. I think it hasn't been able to be sustained because it is that international rivalry that was so dependent on meeting up at these events. And it just happens that, you know what? Both these teams have been good still. But it just hasn't fallen in that type of way, the way that the, the draft and the, and the format of these events has fallen out. Haven't gotten this matchup recently enough. I mean, we did get it somewhat recent, but it still was not for the stakes that we are used to that pumps the fuel into a rivalry like SKT versus EDG. Yeah, and it's crazy. 2021, when they matched up, T1 beat up on EDG and EDG won the whole event. So you can talk about the rivalry better or not, but that EDG team obviously more than held their own old Days is the theme for fifth place on this list. It is a throwback to Cloud9 versus Team Solo Mid. If you watched any of the first three years, four years of LCS, this was the marquee matchup from the moment Cloud9 hit the competitive scene. The last couple of years hasn't quite been the rivalry. It's just been Cloud9 beaten up on TSM. But from 2014 to 2018, this was the matchup in NA. Oh, and that is the peak of that rivalry, peak of NA clashes that we had was the TSM versus C9 instant banger. Slot that one in at the end of the day. That is the best matchup that you were rolling through in those times for the LCS. You had, of course, Mr. Jensen. You had High, even if you're going back even further for Cloud9, you're throwing in the Bjergsen squad for TSM. Even off the rift, you had, of course, Reggie and Jack sharing a couple of jabs each other's ways. As always, this is TSM versus C9. And even in those later years, when we're not talking about it being as valuable and it's tough to evaluate with stuff that happens with TSM, you still had important moments between these two teams. You still had TSM denying Cloud9 that chance at Worlds at one point. And then you had Cloud9 deny TSM the very next year type of situation absolutely some great all-time clashes between these two organizations and of course as you're going to notice theme wise on this list any good rivalry you have some players that have seen both sides of the rivalry going way back to jack as you talked about used to be a gm on tsm before he became that ceo of cloud nine and then the list gets pretty long obviously the biggest two are sven scarin and sven who both you know, maybe looked washed up on TSM and then all of a sudden go to Cloud9 and have MVP level seasons. How did we get to this timeline? Sven was supposed to be the double lift killer for TSM, that replacement. And he absolutely did his darndest at certain points and 
at certain points faltered as well. And this is another thing to look at in that timeline. But he has thrived at Cloud9, found his role as that support. And as you mentioned, even further back, Spent Scarin spending some time on C9 on the opposite side of this rivalry. This is really, when you think about North America, you think about what is a match that gets that blood boiling, TSM versus C9 has been it for so long. And, you know, again, it's not at the same level now, and it's too bad because people were passionate about which side they were on this rivalry, and it feels like that magic, that passion for being behind an organization doesn't really exist in this modern-day LCS. And, I mean, I think part of that is just the modern landscape and how often players are moving around and how often we get these roster changes. It's hard to build that type of loyalty, that type of, uh, you know, connection with players, with a, with a team like that, the way that you were able to back in that past and the way the content was. It's a different era now that we are living in in 2020. Number four on this list is maybe the only rivalry longevity-wise that outlasts TSM Cloud9. We are talking about the iconic telecom war. This you can chalk back to basically 2013, and these head-to-head -head numbers aren't even from there because can't even get numbers from these 2013 2014 seasons but kt bullets kt arrows were still matching up against then skt so we're going on the better part of a decade that this rivalry has existed the only reason it's not cracking the top three is because kt hasn't picked up enough wins in this rivalry unfortunately this is one of those rivalries that gets color shaded too much in that T1 red color, even though, hey, we're sharing some colors here with KT and T1, this rivalry, the telecom war, this is something that we don't have really in any other region because you don't have the type of connection with the rivalry between the sponsors. And I know, and maybe it's not super intense type of thing, but just seeing those two companies that are in the same type of industry, sponsoring these two organizations going together, that was enough to build that bridge. And then it was all about the matches. It's all about the history that builds between these two and what goes on. I guess a lot of that history is faker and the rest of T1 capitalizing and succeeding. There is some punchbacks coming through from KT and I'm talking about the super team, the super SMEB squad that they were able to roll out that is able to best T1 and capture that LCK championship. Yeah, and you can talk about that maybe being the peak because you have that SMEB super team that was, they have said, everyone knew, was built to beat the SKT dynasty. And obviously you had Peanut switching sides going to SKT then matching up against KT. But yeah, those star-studded rosters of 2017. 2018 was kind of the slump year for T1. So that was when KT was at the very top. But we have a resurgence now and saw throughout all of 2023 with this rivalry seeing KT ascend. And of course, any good rivalry? Got former players like Cuz matching up, suiting up for the KT side. BDD, who's been a rivalry to Faker for what, seven years now? It seems like that's kind of one of the aspects that always has to be there for KT is they need something to get at Faker, whether it is one of his old rivals and nemesis, or whether it is an old teammate to try to find a way to beat him. Because obviously, as we have learned very much, that unkillable demon king in the mid lane is such a vital part of T1 and has been such a vital part of why T1 has dominated this rivalry against KT roles. And again, talking longevity, sorry to Ryu to show this clip, but this rivalry goes so far back, it's got the iconic Zed outplay for Faker that he's doing against KT. So fans of KT Rolster have been hating Faker and T1 for, again, almost a decade. Literally the iconic play of League of Legends is born from this rivalry. That's all I gotta say, my man. This is one of the very best and always treat to revisit and talk about when we're looking at rivalries. And hopefully this rivalry only ascends as KT picks up more wins as we move forward into the modern day League of Legends. Top three action now. It's another oldie but a goodie that's maybe fizzled out a little bit over the last few years, but in the early to mid years of the LPL, it was a two horse race going back to back between RNG and EDG. There was a stretch around 2016, 2015 to 2018. These guys won eight out of 10 LPL titles. 
Oh, I feel bad if you are one of the very, you know, I guess somewhat large group that didn't adopt into watching LPL very early on because you missed out on some certified bangers coming across from EDG and RNG and arguably some of the most, one of the most heated player rivalries that I have seen when we're looking at this list and going over some of these things, talking about the two mega icons in the LPL of clear love for EDG and Uzi for RNG. So many times these two Titans clashing out on the rift so many times and so well known through, of course, you know, all the Chinese social media, these two were certainly not very friendly towards one another. I, I remember seeing multiple times they, they'd both be on stage for player introductions or ceremonies, even if it was for like an all-star game, and they would not even look at each other. You could feel the coldness that they had for each other, and hey, let's be honest, they're just both incredibly competitive, and that's what fuels a great rivalry is the players maybe not liking yeah. each other. Absolutely, and certainly with these two players, these two that were very obviously strong in their gameplay, but also kind of outspoken a little bit, even early in their careers, on what they had to say about each other, about that competition and what you saw. Yes, this is certainly kind of for me, the peak that the LPL has been able to deliver. It still is one of their most historic rivalries, maybe not as heavy in steam and power and some flame that we would like to see in modern day iterations between these two could be a little bit spicier now that Uzi is on the side of EDG, at least for this year. But we are talking about one of the very best chance uh, rivalries that we have seen come through from the LPL. And for years, it was EDG denying Uzi that first LPL title before he finally broke through cathartically against EDG in 2018 spring before they went to MSI. And yeah, 2021, we had a quarterfinals matchup between these two as we kind of went into the new era that kind of became Xiaohu versus Scout as Uzi left and Xiaohu kind of became the face of that RNG organization. But now there's Mako. That's the only same member from any rivalry where these two had. There is certainly a cloud of uncertainty when you are looking at this situation of the rivalry between EDG and RNG. And that mainly stems from just the uncertainty around RNG, their ownership situation, how the finances are working there. We've known it's been a little bit wonky and stable, unstable at times, and especially to field a roster that is going to be competitive to that level that we know that EDG pretty darn guaranteed to deliver at least for next year. It's going to be a question mark for me for RNG. And there's other great rivalries in the LPL. You could throw IG and RNG even for 2018, 2019. They were very close. Some more modern ones. We've alluded to JDG, BLG, not a rivalry, just JDG beating up on them. FPX has had some great stuff, but this is this is the one that has stood the test of time for Again, almost a decade when you're going back to these early days of the LPL, which are impossible to find stats on, but because of the ascendance of the LPL before they were, you know, at the same level as Korea internationally, these were the two teams that had the diehard fan bases, much like TSM and Cloud9. You were passionately on one of the other sides. Consistent success was the path to building up those fan bases for both of these squads, having those star players that are able to be in that spotlight and demand type of situation like clear love like uzi absolutely paved the way towards these big matchups these big fan bases that always clash when we're meeting out on the rift with these two squads it might not be a 10 year long rivalry but number two on this list has been going for a long time especially when you're including Name changes, organization, rebranding. We are talking T1, Gen G. You can break this up into multiple eras. The Chovy Gen G era versus T1 is a fantastic rivalry in its own right. And then you go all the way back. You got SKT versus Samsung, where they played back to back world finals. And then Gen G, they've played back to back LCK finals. There's no matchup here where you have that type of. Imagine meeting in the World Finals and LCK Finals back-to-back -back years throughout this rivalry. Oh, baby. What a rivalry to talk about here between these two. And yes, we are looking all the way back to that long telescope lens to see the year back when it is SKT 
versus Samsung Galaxy. And I know that it's not exactly the same type of thing, but you can go even maybe a little bit further and you can slam in both Samsung Blue, Samsung White. I don't care what Samsung you are against SKT is certainly having that type of rivalry. This is one of the very best that we have seen throughout League of Legends sustained throughout all these years, all these different eras that you can slice it through. And of course, one constant with this is the unkillable Demon King, Mr. Faker in the mid lane, hanging around and always being there for this rival. And listen, Ruler has been there for 90% of these, the whole Samsung Worlds era, most of the Gen G era. And of course, you got players switching sides as well. You had Clid going from T1 to Gen G and then beating T1 in a big playoff series in the next year. Obviously, Peanut went over to Gen G and has been thriving in his second stint with Gen G. We don't we don't talk about the Peanut's first run with Gen G. Mm -mm -mm, that never happened, right, man? <laughs> but yes, he is certainly. I, I think, and uh, given obviously his impact for this current iteration of Gen G, one of the big players to talk about that has played on both sides of this rivalry it is one that you look back and you can go all the way with the samsung galaxy era and with ruler and talk about that you know faker getting the best of them at first and in, in la at the staples center and then at the bird's nest in beijing you know getting swamped 3-0 by samsung galaxy and ruler and then you go to the different eras. You start changing things up. You have a little bit of, you know, you have T1 struggle a little bit, not feeling that same type of success they have built their dynasty upon and trying to get back there. But who's in their way? Oh, it's this young kid, this phenom coming through that is going to be the next faker, Chovy in the mid lane. Welcome to your next chapter of Gen G versus T1. And that Chovy era is obviously when Genji finally started picking up LCK titles consistently because for so many years, even, you know, Genji, you look at 2018 Gauntlet, 2020 Gauntlet, they denied T1 a world championship berth a couple of times, but could never get it done in these LCK finals to win. And then Chovy comes, wins a couple with them, a couple of them against T1, by the way. Uh, but just think of the amount of player change that you've had over the history of this roster. I mean, just look at top lane for T1. You're starting this series or this rivalry out with Duke, maybe even Impact. You're going back to Samsung Blue, and then you've gone through everyone from Huni, Kana, Khan, obviously, Zeus. You had the Tall Era, all like six, seven different just top laners. Oh my man, what about my what about your boy Antara? We gotta throw oh, him in. <laughs> my my apologies for getting to God himself. <laughs> oh, but I think that one of the best things about this rivalry and, and the thing that we are talking about is getting some punches both way, of course. Getting the victories for T1, getting Gen G, Samsung, whatever, finding their way to throw that counter punch. This is certainly one of those rivalries that has that bitter taste in your mouth for both sides because they're looking at chances, achievements they could have had only to be denied by that familiar face on the other side in your rival. Really, really one of the best we've got. And I can't believe that we are already treated to that next chapter that is being written. And I'm telling you now, it's the pays chapter. T1 fans, get your tears out, get your trucks on calls on ready because you better believe the Pays era has entered in the conversation of the T1 Gen G rivalry. Don't see this rivalry slowing down anytime soon, only gonna ascend to even higher, maybe even eventually dethroning the top rivalry on this list. Of course, it's G2 versus Fnatic. I mean, on the Rift, played some of the most insane games in the history of the LEC. Off the Rift, not just certain players going there but this caps going from Fnatic to g2 remains the most insane offseason move you could even talk about this rivalry starting in 2017 with caps's debut going up against perks but the real peak is 2018 to 2020 when you have back-to-back -back pentakills in a finals Fnatic goes to the world finals then caps makes the switch to g2 and goes to the world finals with g2 oh my god what a rivalry we've got for you guys g2 versus Fnatic, el classico the rise of the kings whatever you want to call it in the lec we've got this rivalry and it has been an absolute delight 
to get to taste and see some of these uh, clashes that we've had in this one and go back in history. As you mentioned, you can go back to when Caps is on Fanatic. He's Baby Faker. He is this new prodigy. He's going to be the budding star for Fanatic that is going to lead them back to international relevance, back to being a challenger against the LCK and the rising LPL. And of course, yes, that does come true. He is providing that level of potential. You can see it. Maybe you didn't want to slap the Faker label on there, but you were pretty darn sure Baby Faker is coming on through and making sure that he's going to be a pro player you're going to know about in the years to come. And yes, we get that incredible pool party transaction coming on through where he is over to G2 on one of the most crazy offseason moves that we have ever seen. I know it's not going to seem all that crazy given the crazy stuff we have seen in the last year or two, but certainly at the time, it was mind-blowing to see this type of move happen. And it's no secret or surprise that that 2019 to 2020 era was the best and highest level that the LEC had as a whole ever in the history of the scene when you had G2 competing for top fours at Worlds regularly and even Fnatic when they could just not get past G2 in the summer playoffs. You saw them internationally and they were a top eight caliber team. These two, this rivalry single-handedly pulled up the competition of EU to another level. And it had bad blood before Caps makes the trans yeah. move over to join G2. You're thinking about how G2 arrived into the scene of the LEC. It's kind of like Fnatic. We're already the popular kid at school. They've already had success. They've challenged internationally, all these things. And then G2 shows up wearing their leather jacket, chewing blue raspberry bubble gum or whatever. And everybody instantly thinks they're the coolest kid on the playground and wants to be with them. And you know what? They're beating you in gym class. They're beating you in math class. They're beating you in everything else too. Hell yeah, this is the rivalry that we've got. And I think that kind of attitude has stuck through at various times, even with Caps going over to G2, where kind of Fnatic has been, you know, okay, you know, we're still this long running history organization and we're gonna be kind and polite in how we operate and, and you know, communicate with certain things. And G2 has said, I I'm just taking it. I'm grabbing it, my man. I'm the king of this playground. And it was supposed to be all the, I mean, the rivalry gets crazier when then Reckless goes over to G2. And it's supposed to be the rivalry further goes in G2's favor. But that roster ends up imploding and Fnatic gets their own punch back in 2021. Oh, man. Didn't see that one in the cards of Reckless going over to G2. That was one of the ones that we also talked about in the offseason moves. That, uh, no way it's happening. And, and then the for it not to pan out, it was even crazier. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you see it fall out the way that it did with that G2 EU super team collapsing, failing, not able to grasp what success was so in front of them. You know who did? Fnatic. They absolutely grabbed that success that year from the LEC and they've carried it on through. Good to see that we are still living in a timeline with Caps, with G2, who has become arguably a Mr. G2. At this point, no, no Yankos, uh, no perks. Caps is Mr. G2 for me right now with this team leading the charge on the other side. Fanatic picking up steam, still finding ways to retool, bring in young players and find a way to success in the LEC. There's no way Fnatic still doesn't look at what Caps has become. The face of not just G2, but the face of the entire league. And a single tear said, that's our boy. We groomed him to be that. He was supposed to do it with us, but he's been doing it with G2 for five plus years. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.